All right, so here is just a quick video to show what I did on the uh, aileron linkage to uh, correct the mechanical differential um, on the plans. And uh, it's always a good idea when the directions are clear, obviously, to check the plan or unclear and check the plans. Um, you can see this is the hinge line right here. And then here's the pivot point. It's about, it's looking at it probably 3 sixteenths, maybe a quarter of an inch the pivot point behind the hinge line. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to cause the, when you uh, use aileron, um, your uh, downgoing aileron is going to move less than your upgoing aileron for a given stick position. Aileron differential, and that's desirable because it counteracts adverse yaw, and that's great. I'm sure the designers intended it to be that way, but with the advent of affordable computer radios, there's really no need for mechanical differential and it's kind of annoying and it gets in the way and not only that it is a compromise on servo geometry and yields a lower um, in my I, I don't, in my experience it's yielded some strange behavior now I don't know I'm obviously being overly anal because we're talking about a classic scale airplane that's not going to be flown in aerobatics and um, control responsiveness is not necessarily an important thing but just because I prefer everything to be really, really neutral mechanically on board the airplane so that I can set everything up on my computer radio, I've done this. And what I've done is, um, since the stock clevises uh, have a little rod they thread into and then it threads into this basswood block, they don't, you can't move the, the rod up the line that lines up with the servo uh, far enough to get this to extend over the hinge line without uh, compromising strength because you're right at the edge of the basswood block. So that was my that was my main problem. I just solved that. I just bought these Dubro. Um, I guess they're called extra strength or high strength uh, control horns. And I added one screw. And these are just number two socket head machine screws. Um, I've got one right here. They're just uh, these, and they're long enough. They bite into the basswood plenty, plenty well. I've got a uh, Great Plains Super Steerman 72-inch wingspan airplane with a DLE 30 that uses a similar setup and and is fairly aerobatic, not 3D capable by any stretch of the imagination, but fairly aerobatic. And I haven't had any issues with these pulling out, so I'm confident it's going to hold on. And then everything else is just the standard kit setup: the solder link here, and then the um, 440. Uh, screw on clevis here. Um, so I'm really happy. I've got uh, a little bit over what the manual recommends in throw, about an inch and a quarter in both directions. Um, I'll just do the down going direction right now. So, and just a little strain on the servo right at the end of the throw there, uh, probably increasing amperage draw about up to about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, these Savox servos always make a little noise. Um, whenever they're being a little bit stressed. So you can't really use the noise test. You always have to plug in an ammeter, um, which I always do on my setup. So anyways, um, so there you go. Fast servo. It's uh, way overkill for this airplane. <laughs> anyways, um, I don't know if anyone's interested in watching the video once again, but hopefully that explains what I was up to.